So I'm sure that all of you have heard of Superman before, right? Yes. Yeah. So today, I'm going to tell a story about Superman starring myself. And before you guys make any questions about the judgment of my parents, that's not actually me. This is Photoshop. Just making that clear. <laughs> I'm going to tell a story about how a group of fifth graders found a way to heat the homes of 150 families. This short video might give you a glimpse into my topic. I want you to tell me in 30 seconds, Cassandra, you've got this system called TGIF, which is not what we think it is. You turn grease into fuel. Give me 30 seconds on it. Um, well, my friends and I, we created a sustainable system to collect waste cooking oil, have it converted into biodiesel fuel, and distribute it to our local needy families who need heat. You, you're amazing. First of all, you keep better time than a TV anchor does. You and your team members received the 2010 President's Environmental Youth Award. You two are fantastic. So I saw some of you guys have a habit of looking at the Dow Index in the bottom. So I hope you guys made money that day. <laughs> Too bad this wasn't real time. <laughs> My story started in October of 2008 after I visited the Energy Solutions Expo at the University of Rhode Island. There. I came across the very problematic, of global, problematic issue of global warming. Melting ice caps could cause sea levels to rise an average of two to six feet by 2100. Manhattan might even look like this in the next century. Well, if this happens, I guess there'll be no traffic, and you might even kayak to work. <laughs> At the same expo, I talked to Mr. Ryan Mason of Mason's Biodiesel. And yeah, yeah, I, I realized I was a lot cuter back then. Just ignore that. <laughs> And he told me that you could convert waste cooking oil, which people pour down the drain or throw in their trash, into biodiesel, an alternative energy that could help slow down global warming. At the same time, I read an article in the newspaper about how families in my own town couldn't afford to heat their homes. Charities were running out of funds for emergency heating assistance. One charity started an initiative called the $1 Makes a Difference campaign. And in this campaign, Residents donated $1 each week to go towards emergency heating assistance. I thought that this was a good idea, but it wasn't sustainable, and I wanted to help. So I got together with a group of my friends, and we started hosting weekly meetings like this. <laughs> During these meetings, and amidst all the food, we uh, brainstormed ideas on how we could help. We figured if we could get people to recycle their waste cooking oil, then we could turn it into biodiesel fuel and help heat the homes of needy families. Then, we discussed a few business strategies. Our first strategy was to identify our allies. Even Superman has allies, and we figured it was important to find who could benefit from our program and would want to help us. Environmentalists were on our side because we're helping the environment, restaurants because we give them a PR bonus, charities because we give them money, and local towns and governments because we save them money. Recycling oil, instead of pouring it down the drain, where it clogs sewers, can save towns and cities hundreds of thousands of dollars yearly. Our second strategy was to find adults to do the work. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of child labor laws out there, and we figured that our parents probably wouldn't let us play with grease all the time. So we partnered with grease collectors, biodiesel refiners, as well as biofuel distributors. Basically, the, bio, the biodiesel uh, refiner, uh, he sells the grease, or no, he gets the money from the grease, which is a commodity, and the grease collector gets a piece for his work. Then we found a biofuel distributor who was willing to distribute the biofuel for us at a discounted price. We discovered the number one rule of Wall Street. If you want to make a system sustainable, every single party in the process has to make money. That brings me to my last strategy, which is keep it simple. We found that this was essential for people to adopt any changes. So we promoted biodiesel blends, which don't require modification to the furnace, and planned to set up convenient locations where residents could recycle their oil. Then we took action. We split our whole process into three parts, the first of which is raising awareness. We asked our town council to set up a cooking oil receptacle at the transfer station so residents could recycle oil. We distributed 5,300 flyers, 2,500 kitchen calendars, made presentations, and a public service announcement with Cox Media. 
Then we targeted commercial waste cooking oil. We asked restaurants to donate their oil to our program, and currently we have 111 restaurants participating. We figured that a law to ban waste cooking oil dumping could change people's behavior, but we didn't want to just go up to our legislators and ask them to start making the law. Instead, we drafted the bill ourselves and then showed it to them so they could help us get it passed. Our strategy involved something almost non-existent in Washington today called bipartisanship. <laughs> so we worked with these legislators and we testified at the State House in March of 2011. The, the law was passed on the floor and then our strategy worked. The governor signed our bill into law in July. The second part of our process. <laughs> the second part of our process was collecting and refining. We had a grease collector collect the oil from restaurants and residents. They then bring it to a biodiesel refiner where it's refined into biodiesel. And as you can see, we employed our strategy of getting adults to do all the work. <laughs> the last part of our program is biofuel distribution. The biofuel is distributed and all of our proceeds go to charity. We're currently working on biodiesel use in school buses, but again, like the bill, we didn't want to just go up to our school committee and ask them to implement this. Instead, we created our own study of biodiesel. We conducted a nationwide survey uh, to show that biodiesel is reliable, so we uh, surveyed schools that were already using biodiesel in their school buses. We did a gel temperature, gel temperature test to show that uh, biodiesel can withstand cold New England temperatures. We did a pollutants <coughs> test to show it's cleaner. We carried out a flashpoint test to show it's safer, and we calculated the cost of running biodiesel in school buses to show that it's cheaper due to a Rhode Island law that exempts excise tax on biodiesel. Two months ago, we presented our findings to the school committee. And as a result, the superintendent of the schools has made the decision to use biodiesel blends in all of the Westerly school buses. Results so far. We've set up nine public cooking oil receptacles in Rhode Island and Connecticut. We collect about 4,000 gallons of grease per month, and by the EPA's calculations, we've offset 1.6 million pounds of CO2 emissions to date. We've also been able to donate 14,600 gallons of bioheat, or about $53,000, to five local charities, enabling 146 families to stay warm. <laughs> and from this year, uh, we've raised an additional $15,000 for the 2013 winter year. Media coverage has helped us raise a tremendous amount of awareness, from our local newspapers to MTV, which made a documentary which broadcast around the world, um, Ivanhoe News, which let our story be told to 250 TV stations, uh, magazines such as the UNEP Tons of Magazine, which is printed in eight languages, uh, Waste and Recycling Magazine, Biodiesel Magazine, and even a sewer plant magazine featured our project. <laughs> we also got our story told to kids through Scholastic News, and we were even featured on the cover of the Chinese World Journal. The United Nations heard about our program, and they put us on their homepage as an example of sustainable development and green economy. We were even invited to the White House twice. First, for the President's Environmental Youth Awards, you could see me circled in red, <laughs> as well as to, uh, in February of this year for the White House Science Fair, where we even got to sit behind President Obama. And here again, if you can't see, there's me. <laughs> All this media coverage has helped us uh, in raising awareness and spreading the word. As a result, many people have contacted us because they wanted to help. So as a result, we created a toolkit to send out to people like us who wanted to start TGIF in their own communities. By request, we've sent this out to people in Connecticut, Buffalo, New York, Louisiana, Los Angeles, and even Nova Scotia, Canada. These are my teammates. We've been working together for four years now. And we, even though we're still young, uh, we made a difference and changed the world. This is New York. Anything can happen if you work hard and smart. I think that you should take advantage of that.
You can't wait for change to come. Instead, you have to take action and be your own Superman. Thank you.